Andy? Hey, good morning. How you doing, my friend? Ah, doing great. How about yourself? Pretty good. How'd the meeting go last week over to West Burlington? Yeah, we got a lot of stuff done in the last meeting. I'm going to run through a bunch of a bunch of things. I just wanted to thank you, too. This is the most West Burlington news that gets out there. Um, you know, we don't really have a Hawkeye reporter that comes. And right. It was great, the Moyne County news reporter, but sometimes they don't put everything in. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, I'm going to run through a few things. So we did approve the $1.2 million bond for the South Sewer Lift Station last week. So we're going to move forward with that project. Um, pretty important thing for the city. Expensive, but needs to be done. Um, we also say that's a, tw- a 20 the, year deal, right? The Moyne so- County landfill. Andy? Yes. That's a 20 year bond? Uh, that's correct. Yeah, it'll come out in 2040. Gotcha. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. You got it. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing with the Des Moines County landfill. Right now, they're hooked up to uh, Burlington Sewer, and it is actually cheaper for them to build a $900,000 lift station and connect to our sewer uh, than it is to continue to pay Burlington rates. So we're going to get that done here at no cost to the, the city and should actually make us some money long term. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, kind of a surprising thing, but it should work out great for us. Yeah, yeah. And and then uh, I keep hearing about the new water tower um, out toward the shops. What, what Was there progress on that as well? Yeah, that's going to be a two-year project that we're just getting started on. We set a public hearing for next week where we'll actually have bids and talk about some, some specs and plans for that. Um, so that's going to be the shop right next to you guys, that, that building and that water tower that's that's right there across the street from Geary's. Uh, so the two-year plan is to get that moved out to the, the city shops west on Mount Pleasant. So there be, uh, near th- Washington. there be no structures on that land when it's all said and done? That's the plan. Get it all cleaned up and ready for somebody to use. Beautiful. Can I, make my, can I turn in my offer now? Well, you definitely can. It better be large. I don't know how anyone's going to find us anymore. I always say behind the blue water tower. So I don't know. <laughs> well, hopefully there'll be, you know, some great, nice, big business that comes in there. And you can say, hey, we're right behind that. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm happy with that. You, you bet. <laughs> what else? And we did go ahead and approve the first reading of our work zone ordinance. And that is setting fines and um, for areas within the city limits where people maybe ignore uh, city worker signs, road construction signs, things like that, if they're going through it. Uh, we don't really have that protection for our city workers inside the city. So that's going to set up some things there to help protect our guys. That's been a real issue here lately. Hey, last year, uh, last year, last week, I was congratulating you on the asphalt overlay on Houston Street, also known as the parade route. And uh, this week, I noticed yesterday they were cutting. How do you say it? Um, they were saw cutting uh, uh, around each each intersection a semicircle of something uh, where the sidewalk meets the road. Are they going to do concrete curb there, or what? What, is, what are they doing there? So whenever you go in and redo a sidewalk now, there are requirements um, to put in those kind of bump areas where I I actually don't know all of the reasons those are there, but I believe some of it is for uh, handicapped and the blind to, to know that intersection is there. Gotcha. Um, and, okay. and then it's also got to be at certain angles. And um, so we are going back through there, uh, through that area of Houston and redoing those sidewalk entrances right now. And that should be really nice because... I walked that most days, and a few of those sidewalks really needed some repair. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be, I got you, those raised bumps for traction on the slippery and whatever for the handicap. Yep, yep, yep. Right. Got it. Yeah, it should, should be really nice when they're done, and I'm glad we're getting it done before the snow flies. And, and that way this year when we when we hit spring, all that will be done and ready to walk. That up. project's gone pretty quickly, it seems. That was a bigger project than I originally knew. Yeah, they're doing a good job. They're, they're getting that done fast. And then I know they're still working on getting a few things done down south on gear. Um, we, we were kind of told if, if you can stay away from south gear while we're doing some the south lift station and still doing a little road work here before it gets too cold, too. Just 
if that is an option, we're not closing the road, but we do have a lot of construction traffic down that direction right now. So if you have a way to avoid that all the way down to, you know, Sunnybrook and those areas, I would take another route if possible. Yeah, so uh, the route is division to the traffic circle. If you want to go over there, go around you know, without without going down by the lift station down there. But there was also talk about speed limits as long as we're back up on, on uh, agency and gear. Uh, th- those kinds of areas. What, what did you figure out on that? Yeah, we've talked about that for a few weeks, and there's you know a lot of city staff and at least one council person that wants to go ahead and lower those. But our city code actually states that we need to run a traffic study before we change any speed limits. So we did table the discussion of the speed limits until after a traffic study could be completed. Um, so we are going ahead and putting out I guess there's just one traffic sign that regional planning has that collects data. So we're going to move that around on agency and move it around on Mount Pleasant uh, west of gear out there and, and get some traffic data. And then I'm hoping that we at least, you know, take a look at that data and match that up with what the state recommends in terms of speed limits. Mm-hmm. Sounds like there's some that are interested in just changing it no matter what the data says. So I, I hope we do use it. Right, 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 right. Um, so let's see. Uh, besides that, you were talking last week about these flag, feather flags, flag signs that stick in the ground. Yeah, the fin signs. And I think last week I called them flag signs, but they're fin signs. So you've probably seen them um, a lot of times at, you know, biking locations and cellular stores use those quite a bit. And um, so we are discussing that. We had a, a uh, work session after our normal meeting to discuss that. And we're going to look at some code changes to allow those. And it may only be temporary. Uh, we're still kind of talking about that. You know, it may only be 60 days out of the year or something like that, since it's not really a permanent sign. Um, and then we're also looking at changing some language in our code about flashing signs, because right now it's a little vague about what you can have that flashes and it it talks about you can't have red and blue lights but it also says you can't have any flashing so we're going to try to clean that up hmm. interesting uh, uh that that uh, people find a way to highlight their business and you can't no matter how good your sign code you can't anticipate every last innovative thing that that these small business owners might do that's it's kind of funny but it's a you constant. It. Not, you know, I, I was in charge of running the like the Fun City and Catfish Bin sign for years and years, and so I understand. You know, right. there's a there's a, a fine line there between grabbing someone's attention and being a distraction to drivers. Gotcha, gotcha. Now we had talked last week about the West Burlington Fire Department pancake breakfast, typically on the Fourth of July, but now it's been uh, moved to. Is it this weekend? This Saturday? Right, it is. Yep, this Saturday the seventeenth. I unfortunately my family uh, set up some pictures that morning out of town, so I'm going to be gone. I'm going to try to swoop in and give a donation, but yeah, it's this Saturday, six a.m. to ten a.m. It is free will donation, so it's not a you know a specific charge. Just ask that you give what you can, and that money is used by the fire department, and then they also give to various community groups. And it's talk. it's a drive through this time. No, no, you, you don't get to sit there and visit with your friends like we normally do. It's a drive through to go order free will donation. Correct. You got it. Yeah, I, I wish we could go ahead and do that, but you know it is tough right now in COVID times to promote the gathering as a city. But you know, I really hope we can get this cleaned up and get to the point we can get back to some normalcy on on things like pancake breakfasts and 4th of July and get this going here. Um, I noticed in the, um, uh, both in the supervisor's meeting and in the Hawkeye today, and also in your meeting the other day, for instance, you know, that little section of the newspaper that says for the record, it says Burlington police department reports in the past few weeks, several vehicles in Burlington, most, if not all with keys left inside were stolen overnight BPD is cautioning residents to not leave their keys and vehicles in their cars to lock up, according to a post. Well, not just that, but cars have been broken into and, you know, rifled through for anything that they can steal out of a car, not just the car stolen. 
And then I see here where some of this is uh, out in the county and all of it's uh, also some of it here in West Burlington, right? Yeah, and it's pretty rare in West Burlington. We really don't have much crime in, in terms of um, going through people's cars and homes and things like that. But we have here in the last couple of weeks have that issue. And, and matter of fact, uh, my neighbor had that happen to them, and I actually had a vehicle on my property get rifled through one night that was unlocked. Uh, no keys in it or anything, but um, so that's becoming an issue right now. And so we've got a couple things we're doing. Number one, obviously, just remind people to lock their doors at night. This doesn't seem that people are going through in the daytime, and it doesn't look like uh, people are breaking windows and so forth. So just keep everything locked up. And then we've also added a section on the city website where you can go and add your uh, digital camera that you have at your home, your video cameras, surveillance cameras, those kind of things. Um, it doesn't give anyone access to that, but it lets police know that, hey, there is a camera active in this area. So if somebody reports a crime or a break-in or something like that, they know, hey, we can contact this person and try to get some film of people that are in the area at that time. That's a good idea. So, like, if you're at 123 Broadway and – uh, 124 Broadway across the street gets broken into, the police can look online and see that you across the street have a ring doorbell or some other device, and they might be able to find a clue on that crime that didn't happen to you but happened right next to you, say, or whatever. That's that's good. So we, you go to this. It's kind of the advanced um you know, neighborhood neighborhood watch. You actually get it on film, and right, and uh, it's a great thing to do. And I don't think it really, you know, gets into your privacy at all because they're not they don't have access to the camera, but they can ask you for it if something happens. Awesome. This is Andy Crowner. Besides being on West Burlington City Council, he is a Remax Real Estate Realtor. And I want you to switch hats now, unless I've left something out of the city. That's all that I know about. Anything no, else? That's pretty good. I just I do hope people come out and support the fire department this weekend. That's a big thing for them. Six a.m. to ten a.m. <laughs> drive through, right? Right. You got it. Good eats too. Um, the um, real estate game right now. We've talked about it each week a little bit, but things seem to be ramping up. Into I guess if I could, as a layman, describe. Uh, what I'm hearing from you, it's that things are moving at a faster pace on both sides of the equation. Houses are getting sold even before the sign gets in the yard in some cases, and houses are um, being um, purchased in a variety of new ways that make the transaction quicker because of the Internet predominantly, I presume, and people can look at 10 houses um, on on a website, you know, without having to drive into ten different places, it's speeding up the process. So as we as we look at that, what are the good ways to use the internet and various websites? A lot of people go to Zillow, I know, or some like those. Um, there's another one. What is it? Uh, Zillow and uh, yeah. yeah, Zillow and Realtor.com are yeah. two of the really heavily trafficked sites. Right, that's it, realtor.com, yeah, yeah. You know, historically, those have worked really well, but unfortunately, in the speed that this market is moving today, the data on those websites is frankly just behind. Right, can't Every keep up. Every single day, I get an email from somebody or a text saying, hey, I'm interested in this uh, house, and I got to say, well, I, you know, I sold that two months ago, um, so that, that one is sold. And they right say, now. but it's still on Zillow. As being available. Right, yeah. You got it, yeah. And it's, you know, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but it, there's just a, um, a way that realtors on our end mark a home as sold or contingent. You know, it's just kind of waiting to close. Right. And Realtor.com and Zillow and those sites don't look at that data. So they show active when really it's got an accepted offer and it's just kind of waiting for the dates to close. So Right. That data is just running two months behind, and in this market, you can't be running two minutes behind because homes are flying off the market as fast as they come on. So um, I do have that tool we put together for for you guys. It's at andycrowner.com slash kcps. Um, what that does is I would sign you up to receive instant alerts when a home is listed. 
And the difference with that is it ties directly into our multiple listing system. It's not using a third party. And I can set it up to show you homes that are not contingent and use that data so you are only seeing things that are really actively on the market. You can see things that are genuinely available because I hadn't thought about that. But, you know, once a person makes an offer on a home and the offer is accepted, you still have to have appraisal, home inspection, bank approval. These things can drag on. Meanwhile, it's not shown sold yet because it isn't sold yet. Um, and that that could really uh, take you out of uh, the contention on a house that you really, really want. You're looking at old, old stuff. So andycrowner.com slash KCPS. Uh, also, if you just go to andycrowner.com, you can get uh, some free guides there that help you through these various processes and educate you, especially if you're a first-time person. That's always exciting uh, to see that come out. It's never been a better time to get financing in terms of interest rates, right? I think historically, isn't this all-time low, right, kind of thing? Yeah. I went through and looked at, uh, like, the last 40 years of interest rate averages, and, I mean, yeah, it used to be 10%, 12%, those things. And yeah. It seems like every time we hit a financial bump in the road as a country, the people drop the interest rates, and now it's down to almost nothing. You know, you're, t- you're paying 25 uh, up to upwards of three percent, but more in the two and a half range, and it's never been that low. It's a great time to buy, and if if you just think about what that does for your house payment, it, I mean, it significantly saves you a lot of money in interest in house payment. You can afford a lot bigger house, and, and those that are looking to buy their first house uh, right now is the time. There's there's state money available and grants for for help with down payment. Plus, you have the low interest rates, so it's a great time to purchase. And we do have some great homes, even though we need a lot more. Hmm. Um, uh, so somebody went to the website and then posted in the chat room, Andy, andycrowner.com, unexpectedly closed the connection. Jack, just hit refresh. <laughs> uh, connection closed. Reload. Anyway, um. Yeah, let's. Uh, we're almost out of time for today, but let, let's talk about. I didn't know about that state thing, but that's ringing a bell now. I read a story about that somewhere. Can you tell us next week about what's available for new homeowners? Because the state really wants you to buy a house. Uh, they Absolutely. want. They want you to stay here, put down roots. They want the property tax money. And um, I was just mentioning this to my wife last night. I feel left out that the all-time low interest rates are now and i have nothing to buy anywhere and you know you have this feeling like it's going to last forever it is not going to last forever you'll look at yourself five years from now and when the interest rates are back to 10 percent, and say why didn't i do something all those years you know and we have a lot of properties that are you know bought as rentals here in our town and so if you're interested in that it's still a great time to buy an income property as well because you can also get a great rate on those so yeah, yeah. thinking about you know real estate's a good place to have your money compared to the ups and downs of the stock market right now it's a good time to do that as well right on andycrowner.com slash kcps all right thanks andy did i leave anything out that you'd like to say or uh, tell me about a property in 60 seconds I just want to say happy birthday to my mom, Sheila. It's her birthday today. Oh. Uh, I really enjoyed learning real estate with her. It's great working up uh, with her and all the great people at Remax every day. So happy birthday. If you see her out today, tell her tell her happy birthday. Awesome. Will do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. AndyCrowner.com slash KCPS. AndyCrowner.com. Jack, did you hit refresh and get in there? Hopefully. And uh, yes, happy birthday. In in honor of Sheila Crowner's birthday, after the bottom of the hour news break, which is imminent, I'm going to play one of my favorite songs. <laughs> in honor of Sheila, though, you understand, that's the way it works for birthdays around here. I'm not going to play one of her favorite songs. That, would be, that wouldn't be a thing. Uh, I'm going to play one of my favorite songs. But sweet woman, too. And good at her job.